Hi everyone, this is Lucas from People Can Code, and in this video I'm gonna show you or explain you what controller is and what the view is in Ruby on Rails as a part of MVC uh, framework. Um, so in the other video I explained the model and the model was defining what the things were, like their definitions basically. Controller is different. The user, oh, the, the, the controller uh, to us is, is really a doing heavy lifting when we do interaction between our model that sits somewhere there on the server and the user. So controller is going to handle all of this, um, you know, complex logic, all the communication, all the, you know, rendering partials, uh, you know, saving things to the database, uh, giving feedback to the user. Um, so the controller is a very, very interesting part of our application, very powerful, and it's good to understand them and what they do, obviously. <laughs> um, so, and the view is basically a template. So it's going to be something that is going to be shown to a user. Very often that will be an HTML document. Um, so without further ado, let's go and create a model and give it a view or make an action in that uh, controller. Sorry, controller, not model. So let's go here, exit. Oh, I'm in the console, so if you want to exit the console, um, uh, just type exit. Okay, so make sure we are inside of our application, just uh, as you would expect. And let's run the generator uh, that in Rails will generate a new controller for us. Then we can actually dig in and understand what it can do. So Rails generate controller. And let's give it this controller a name. Let's call it users controller. So just type simply users. Okay. Before in the in the, in the other video we created a model and we call it user. Um, and the controller users will generally make um, will interact with our users controller. Um, so we just go users and that's it. Okay, we just go press enter. And I create a whole bunch of files, but the really the most important file to us is this one. There is uh, under app controllers users controller dot rb. So if you go back to our um, editor and we open uh, app controllers and there is a user users controller. So again, very similar to the model. Uh, it looks almost identical, actually. So it's also a class uh, we call users controller and it inherits from uh, from application controller. Uh, don't worry about what inherits means. It's really not that important. Uh, if you're just a beginner, uh, just it just think that it's going to work. And everything for this controller, all the actions and methods and everything, we're going to put between this first line when we open the declaration and this end at the very bottom. So make sure you don't start typing here, okay? Because it's not going to work and it will be, you're going to get a whole bunch of errors. So make sure that it's always in here, okay? <clears throat> so. So that's the first thing that we have to look at. And before we really can start looking at the controller, uh, we will have to define some routes. And what route really is, okay, if you ever heard about the router, if we open a, a browser, okay, let's uh, open a new tab, and let's call this, uh, let's, let's go to local, local host, Column 3000. Okay, so when we start our server, uh, our application will be available at localhost colon 3000. We don't run the application yet, so let's go in and start our application. So from the command line, go here and type Rails C or the Rails S for server. And that start our web brick that comes packaged with Rails and it's running on port 3000. So now if we go back to our browser and we type localhost colon 3000, uh, we see this welcome screen from, from Rails. Um, and okay, so what, what was this 
welcome screen, okay? <laughs> how, how is it here? Uh, well, basically, Rails application, when you first create it, it will, it will just make this welcome screen for you. So your website doesn't crash. <clears throat> but we will change this behavior. We'll create a, a, a new page. Um, but let's have a look where this is all defined, where, you know, we type different address and, you know, how our application understands where we go with this address. So let's go back to our application. And there is this folder called config. If you open it, there is, um, there is an app, there is a file there, routes.rb. Okay. And this is where all the, you know, the addresses are being defined. So I'm going to explain what routes actually can do, what, what this file is, uh, in the more details in the, in the other video. So for now, let's just add type this line here, resources, users. Okay. So that will create a whole bunch of routes for us and then we can use the users controller. So don't worry about the routes right now. Uh, there'll be another video for you to understand a little bit more what the routes do. So let's go back to our users controller. Okay. And let's define an action. Okay. Def, um, and let's call this action index. Remember every single definition of action we need to close with an end. Okay. Like this. So we're going to define it in here, but for now, let's just, let's just keep it empty. So please save this. <clears throat> and, um, I want to show you something because when in routes, we define this resources users that actually create a whole bunch of possible addresses that we can use inside of our browser here. Uh, and to see those addresses, let's go and in the terminal window. Okay. So let's, let's close this. And if you're here running your server and you're on Mac, uh, it's very easy, uh, to open another window and stay in the same folder by just pressing command and tab. Uh, if you're on windows, that might be a little bit different. I'm not sure, um, how to do it, but basically see, we staying in the same, uh, folder and let's type, um, let's type this command here, rake routes. So rake routes will do, will just give us all possible addresses that we can use in our application. Um, <clears throat> so all the addresses that are defined here, I'll show you how to read this are defined by this one single line. Okay. Rails did all the heavy lifting and create a whole bunch of different possible addresses. So the one that we want they're interested in is this one. Okay. Because we just created in the user's controller, we created action index. And what we want this action to do is to list all the users that we have in the database. Okay. Index that's pretty much self-exploratory. So we call it index, but we can call it all any other different way. However, Index is part of this, the way that we would normally name uh, the action. Um, the reason for convention and naming of those actions is, um, well, it kind of gives us, it frees us from making decisions about uh, quite fundamental parts of the program. Therefore, any Ruby on Rails program will be built in a similar way if people just adhere to some principles. So when I work on my Ruby applications, Ruby on Rails, I'll always try to adhere, adhere to, um, to a standard set of, uh, of actions, which I'll show you in, uh, in another episode, but let's, let's look at the index action. Um, so in rail crowds, we have this action, oh, sorry, we have this route that will, um, give us ability to go to this index action. So if you look at the last column, it says, controller and action. So controller is users controller and action is index right here, controller users and action index. So this, oh, sorry, um, this address or this right address right here will send us to the users controller to the index action. 
And the address is right here. So you see your R URI pattern slash users. So if we go to the browser and we type users and we click enter, that's what we get. We say the template is missing. <clears throat> so we have our controller, but we don't have our view. So let's go ahead and create a view. If we go back to the sublime uh, to editor, under app, we have the folder called views. Okay, if you open that folder, there is another folder called users. It was automatically generated when we typed Rails generate controller users. So if you open that folder, you notice there is nothing there. There is no template, there is no views. So let's go ahead and create one and let's call it index.html.erb. Okay, if you save that, and uh, notice that I named it index.html.erb. This index is matching the name of my action. And because those names match, Rails would be able to find them, match them, uh, without me writing any extra code. So if I go here and I type this, I just use some HTML. So I'll just type this uh, will be the list of all users we we have. Okay, if I save this and go back and refresh our localhost slash users, you notice that now we see our code or we see our text. <clears throat> so in other words, the we just create a controller and we create a view to match that controller. We also created a routes so we can now get to that action and get to that view using a URL that maps right to it. <clears throat> now, let's talk a little, about, a little bit about what happens actually here. So let's go here and let, let me just type something. I think it will be easier. I have nothing to draw on uh, right now. So I'm going to type some, some comments here. Um, so they, basically, when people come uh, to our website, they type um, a URL. Okay, so in the browser. And when they type it, that sends a request, basically, and it's very, very simplified, but that goes to our routes, okay? Okay, or router. And our router looks at the URL, okay? So let's call it analyze. Okay, and we'll try to find the patching the patterns. Okay, we'll find matching patterns. So what the what the router will do? Oh, oh, oh go back. Okay. Um, okay, here. So what the router will do? We'll find. Oh, this slash. Okay, look. After the slash, there is users. Okay. So go back here, it's like, oh, users, users, I get slash users. Do I get anything else? No, okay, good. So I go to users controller index action. So our router will send us to the matching, to matching action in matching controller. Okay, and the controller will try to find a matching template in the views. Okay, so just let's drop a line. Okay, matching controller and the controller will try to match with the view. Okay, there is a lot of stuff. Uh, that we can do with our uh, controllers and views and render alternative controllers, alternative views, etc. But that's a basic standard way. So we type the URL, it comes to the router, router tries to analyze the URL, and it will try to send us to the right controller. And the controller uh, is really what we do the 
you know all the asking you know asking the database for things for instance we can ask in our index controller we can ask our database to return every single instance of a class for example user so in the previous ep pre previous video that we created a user user model okay so we call it user class with capital U so now let's try to find all the records that we have in the database for the user and save them in the variable. So we use this special kind of variable at add symbol, with add symbol. Let's call it users. Okay, we can call it the way we want. So we try to call it so it, it's meaningful. So users equal user class dot all. So what we'll do, we'll go to the our model and we try to find every single instance of that model. So all the users they can find in database and we'll save it in a variable. So when we have 10 or 20 users, that's acceptable. If we have 1 million, that's going to probably not be a good way to, to query our, our, our database. But for now, it's fine. So we define this variable. And um, this variable is a very special variable because it can travel between uh, controller action and the matching view. So if we define it in the, the, the action index, it's going to be available in index view inside of the users folder. So if we go here, we can actually use that variable. And we do it with the Ruby injection code. Okay, so and this is the syntax. And we say at users dot each do and in those vertical lines it's called pipe uh, we just pass a variable uh, so let's call it um, f okay and then of course we need to close it everything in Ruby or most of the things we need to close with an end okay and here uh, we can interact with um, the collection of users that we got back from the database. Okay, so let's let's um, do it this way. So f dot name, and let's put it in the p tag, just like that. If we go save, okay, just give you a second if you want to stop and type this. Save and go back to. Uh, our website and we refresh you'll see that we have a, <clears throat> a record here so if you haven't watched the previous video um, you probably won't have anything here and your application will probably crash uh, so make sure that you watch uh, understanding uh, um, model first and we, you get to this point because right now you are using controller to really control that record uh, and we get this ugly code here that is really the whole complete uh, record of Tom. And we get it because we have this equal sign here. So if we delete that uh, and refresh, we just get the Tom's name. But we can also add other things. For example, okay, let's, let's just break this a little bit. Okay. We can have name. And just oh, okay. We have a name. Let's give him also age. Just like we did before. If you haven't looked at that episode, I recommend you to have a look. F dot age. And we also had bio. And we just do it like that. <clears throat> so basically what this does is the controller will ask for all the users. Those users are saved inside of this variable as a list. Okay, which is available immediately in the view. So in the view, we take that list and on each record that it's in that list, 
you know, we save that record to the F variable and we execute the code inside. So we take the first user in the list, we do display his name, his age, his bio, and then we go back. We take the second user from the list, we save it in the F, and we show his name, age, and bio, and we go on and on and on. If we have one million users, we'll do one million times. Um, so right now we only have Tom, okay? And we only show his, his record once. So if you go back here, if you refresh, now you can see that Tom's uh, name uh, and his age and also his bio. But we can go back <clears throat> to our terminal and run the console again, Rails C for console. And let's create another record. And let's call this record um, Frank. Oh, sorry, with lowercase f, because it's a very, I'm sorry, variable. And again, we use user class, call it new name Frank. I give him age uh, Frank, I'm not sure. I think might be this. And then we also give him bio. Okay, and Frank was born in Boston, Massachusetts. This is, well, I'm not sure if this is the abbreviation. Let me close parenthesis and enter. And then we can save Frank. Frank dot save, enter. There we go, it's in our database. So if we go back to our view or our browser and we refresh the page, now we have both Tom and Frank displayed on the index page. <clears throat> so what happened here is that the controller really did a heavy lifting because it went to the database it asks for all the users, save them in the users variable. It also picked the right view from uh, the from from the views folder. Replaced this code with the things that he got from the database and send that to us, and we can see that in the browser. So use this template, get things from the database, and it's, it's a whole bunch of stuff that our controller did for us. Um, so summing this up, you can think about the controller as, as the commander of our application. Controller will decide what to do with things, how to respond to users' actions, uh, whether to just display a list of something or maybe save something to the database or maybe send an email or trigger some other action. So controller is really an action thing, okay? Think about model as being more static, defining things, what they are, what they are capable of doing, whereas the controller really makes those things do things, okay? It'll trigger them. And that's how we want to build our application. Of course, there you can build it in a different way. Uh, but in Ruby on Rails, uh, community, we have a certain way ways of doing things. And that's the way uh, that we would do this interaction. <clears throat> also, um, going back to just to the views and views are very, very simple thing. Views are just something that gets, uh, you know, gets returned to our user. Um, and we mostly use HTML views. But in some situations, we might use JavaScript views or some other kinds of data. Um, but they're basically just templates and they're very simple and they don't really do much. Uh, all the heavy work is done by both um, controller and model. So in the, in the, in the videos to come, uh, we will use this uh, you know, paradigm extensively and we do more of the model view controller. And also in, that, in one of the next videos, I'll show you what how those three things fit together uh, in one big example from start to finish. Thank you very much, and I see you in the next video.